Welcome to IRG's Health Talk. I'm Tom Hutler, along with Shannon O'Kelly, physical therapist and president of IRG Physical and Hand Therapy, and our guest, Mariner's great Jamie Moyer. Jamie Moyer started pitching in the majors in 1986. An all-star and a World Series champion, Moyer is only a few wins shy of 300. At the age of 49, he became the oldest pitcher to win a major league game, and at the current age of 50, he still hasn't officially retired. In 2002, Moyer and his wife founded the Moyer Foundation to serve kids in crisis. His foundation has raised more than $25 million to date. Jamie, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you, Shannon? Excellent. Hey, since we last spoke, uh, it sounds like you've been pretty busy, and just recently uh, you came out with a new book. Uh, just tell me, I can't, how Jamie Moyer defied the radar gun and defeated time. What's going on there? What's that about? Well, you know, it's, it's a book that I, I wrote um, with my writer, Larry Platt, from Philadelphia, and it's, uh, it's you know, I think the title explains a lot of what it is. It's, you know, throughout my life I've been told um, that I can't. And uh, in my younger years of my life, and even in my professional life as a baseball player, I've always been told the things that I can't do. And um, you know, there was, uh, there was a, a, a portion early in my or time early in my career where you know I wasn't doing things consistently, and um, and and that was competing and winning and pitching deep into games and things like that. And uh, I had the good fortune of meeting a, a gentleman by the name of Harvey Dorfman, who's a sports psychologist and. Uh, really kind of helped me with the mental part of game, the game. And, uh, again, you know, that's part of the reason for the book as well. Um, you know, just tell me I can't. Um, this gentleman you know, gave me a lot of skills and sent me in directions that uh, I had never experienced before on, on the mental side of the game. And we know baseball is a very physical game, but, you know, there's, there's a lot of the mental side that is involved with it. So, um I mean, through the book, I've shared a lot of stories uh, with Harvey and I, um, and or Harvey speaking to me or me speaking to Harvey, and uh, really feel like it, it crosses over into everyday life, um, experiences of success and failure that we've all kind of had and people can relate to. Yeah, and so you talk about uh, Harvey Dorfman, and he was a sports psychologist, and in the book, I understand back in those days, that was your mid-20s, was it common for athletes to essentially seek out sports psychologists? Um, it was something that, you know, some guys did. Harvey worked with a lot of different baseball players, uh, and he was very good at it. But, uh, yeah, it was something that, you know, it wasn't something that, you know, everybody did, but it was something that a fair amount of guys did. And then, actually, organizations started to hire people like that. Um, to work with their players and, and work with their coaches and work with their front office people. And, you know, I think some people um, thought, thought it was quite beneficial, and I think there's other organizations and players that thought, nah, this is all, uh, you know, a, a, a bunch of, are a waste of time. And, uh, you know, I was really to the belief that uh, it really helped me, and it did. And, uh, again, you know, after the, you know, when I met Harvey in 1991, you know, I continually worked on this part of my game, the mental part, and uh, used it throughout the remainder of my career. And, and I really believe uh, and truly believe that, uh, you know, we could all use something like this. And, and a lot of it's just reminders, but it's also there's, there's some skills that you can learn um, and challenges to challenge yourself to become not only a better athlete, but a better person in your daily life. Yeah, I think it was uh, Yogi Berra. Didn't he once say ninety uh, percent of this game, or what did he say? Half of this game is ninety percent mental, or something like that. Yeah, something to that effect. Yeah, and it is. <laughs> I mean, you think, like you said, you know, you, you watch baseball and, and you see, you know, everybody has physical ability, but you, you know, baseball is a game of failure, and how do you deal with that failure? And uh, that's where you know I really struggled with the game because, again, I, I really wasn't the consistent player that that I wanted to be. But I didn't know where to go, and and Harvey was that that person, and uh, you know, and, you know, like I said, it was. I just thought it was uh, a great way to share, and uh, you know, this is a book that anybody can read if you're a you know a kid, a, an adult a, in business, if you're an athlete, um, and I think everybody will be able to relate to it. Absolutely, and uh, in your mid twenties, I don't think people realize, but I think if I remember in the mid twenties. You were almost out of the game, or, or well, close to. Yeah, at, at 29, uh, I was offered a coaching job with, this, wow. with the Chicago Cubs in the minor leagues, and uh, you know, 20 years later, I retired. 
So, you know, if I really believed that I should take that coaching job, I would have never had the, uh, the experience of, tra- of challenging myself to become better um, and, and become the player that I wanted to become. Well, I'm curious, uh, from a standpoint of you must have had several doubters around you or in your life. Uh, what one principle did you learn or did you use to ignore those people? Because that's tough when people are doubting what you can do. How do you develop that confidence, uh, whether it's baseball or professional life or even dealing with young people in the world today? Right. Well, I think you know, what, it, what it took for me was, number one, was to realize what I did well and learning what I did well and then reiterating what, reiterating what I did well one of the things that we talk about in the book a lot is focusing on the task at hand. And for me, you know, I'll simplify it and say, okay, the task at hand for me is to make a pitch with good mechanics and, and execute that pitch. Instead of trying to think about, okay, I have to throw this pitch. I have to get this hitter out. Oh, and I'm worried about what the fans think, or I'm worried about what the media is going to say, or I'm worried about what my manager is going to say, or I'm worried about my job. Are they going to send me down to the minor leagues? Are they going to release me? You know, all those things start to clutter that that one goal is focusing on the task at hand. So learning to separate things com- or compartmentalize things um, became very, very important for me, but also establishing a plan and sticking with my plan uh, on a daily basis. And not just, you know, not just while I was out on the mound competing, but what I did the four days in between my starts. And, and you, people need to know you worked hard on those four days between your starts, I mean, you focused on a lot of physical activity training. It's not, it's a lot of mental, like you talked about, but you also worked hard because like Tom mentioned in the opening at age 49, you became the uh, oldest pitcher to win a game. And that's Mm -hmm. pretty impressive. Yeah. And, And, you know, but again, you, you you know, to get to that end, you got to start somewhere and you got to have a big, you know, I'm a big believer. You have to have the, you have to create the biggest base that you can, that you can create. And then you work off of that. And your legacy, uh, everybody knows or should understand, your legacy is beyond baseball. I mean, you've taken what you've learned in baseball, and you and your wife, Karen, have started this incredible foundation, the Moyer Foundation. It's really built uh, for, for kids, and it's all about the children. And tell us what's, what, what you're doing in the foundation these days. Yeah, yeah, well, I appreciate you bringing that up. Yeah, my wife and Karen and I started a foundation called the Moyer Foundation here in Seattle in 2000, and... Um, you know, we work with a lot of grassroots organizations involved with the Fred Hutch Cancer Research Center, Children's Hospital, Cancer Care Alliance, um, and you know, it's just really blossomed into a, 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 a great way to, to give back and, and help children in distress, and, and that's what really our mission is about, helping children in distress, and through that, we've been able to create a network of bereavement camps throughout the United States, which the original camp started here in Stahomish County in 2002, uh, but we have 41 of those camps throughout the country. They're free camps for kids ages 6 to 17 who have lost somebody near and dear to them. Um, that's a weekend camp, and as I mentioned, they're free. And then we also have another camp called Camp Mariposa, uh, which again are free camps for children ages 9 to 12 who are living uh, under the roof with an addicted family member. And uh, again, you know, unfortunately, addiction is uh, very, quite prevalent in our, in our world. And uh, unfortunately, there's kids that have to live in that environment. And what we're seeing, unfortunately, with kids that are living in this situation, that they believe that they're the cause, and they're really not the cause. The you know, the addiction has come from somewhere else. So to be able to bring these kids together in, in either one of these situations, Camp Aaron or Camp Mariposa. Um, they're camps that kids can come together and learn coping skills and also re- have the wherewithal to reach out when they need the help. And, you know, yeah. our biggest goal is to see these kids move forward in their life, uh, reach their goals, attain their dreams, and move on in their life. Yeah, that's a, that's a great a great cause, and um, I've I've been to your luncheon, and I've seen kind of the results. I've seen these kids get up and talk about their experience at these camps, and I think Camp Aaron, uh, its roots were local here. I think it started in Everett. Yeah, Is that right. Yeah, up up in Snohomish County. Yes, yeah, and uh, still going strong. And like I said, very proud to say we have 41 camps throughout the country. Uh, this being the first year that I haven't played, I've had the good fortune of getting to a, a number of camps. And throughout my career, I've been able to sneak into a couple camps here and there. And uh, to see um, the life changes that these kids go through in a weekend camp is just 
amazing. Give us some historical perspective. I mean, in 2002, um, you know, what inspired you and your wife to start the foundation, and how has it changed over the years? Well, you know, in when we started it in 2000, you know, our, our whole goal, you know, we worked with the Mariners hand in hand with community service, but we felt like as a couple, we weren't doing enough. So, and that's when we started our, our foundation We and we started, uh, our first event was a bowling tournament with my teammates. We raised a lot of money for organ awareness and organ donation. And, um, you know, we wanted to, you know, to prove to people that, you know, we're donating monies and, and their time and their talent to our organization that, we were legitimate, so we created a, a 501c3, and my teammates supported me unbelievably in the 10 years that, that I was here with as the as a Seattle Mariner. And uh, you know, as we've grown, like you said, we've you know we've created our, our network of camps and been able to reach out to many many children in distress. And we've come to realize that these kids that are in distress, they don't ask to be in these situations. So if we can be a kind of a sounding board for them and create awareness in the community um, for the community people to, to see some of the issues that are, that are really out there um, and, and make an impact and, or have an impact on a community to make this community a better community to, to live and work in. Yeah, that's, that's, again, that's incredible stuff that you and your wife are doing and how the foundation has grown. I understand, do you have a camp now in every Major League Baseball park or city that has a baseball every, park? Every there? Major League Baseball city, yes. So we're very proud of that. And, um, you know, again, you know, these camps usually average anywhere from 50 to 100 kids. They come in for a weekend. They go through many traditional uh, camp activities with uh, grief activities intertwined. There's professional grief counselors at the camp working with the kids, and it's amazing over a two-and-a-half-day period, the bond that these kids create with each other. Um, you know, many of them are, you know, none of the kids usually know each other um, when they come to the camp, and it's amazing within hours how they've already created a bond, but, you know, how they can share their stories um, and, and be in an environment where they're very comfortable. Imagine yourself... Um, and maybe there's somebody out there that can relate to this. You know, maybe you're 10 years old and you've lost uh, somebody close to you, and you have to go back to school, and all of a sudden you feel different because you're the one that doesn't have that you know, parent or sibling uh, who is, is with you anymore. And all of a sudden you start to separate yourself from the group, and all of a sudden your schoolwork starts to decline. Um, you know, you kind of go into a shell, and all of a sudden you're, you're kind of lost where – when they come to camp, they can they can all share, they can cry together, they can laugh together, they can play together, but they can grow and learn and move forward in their life and, and hopefully fulfill their, their goals and their dreams. So if we have listeners out there that want more information on, one, the Moyer Foundation, or even, two, uh, this new book that's out, Just Tell Me I Can't, um, where would they find information? Well, you can, you can go, if you want to learn more about our foundation, go to moyerfoundation.org. Um, and the book, Just Tell Me I Can't, is being sold at Barnes & Noble. You can also go to Amazon.com and find the book. So I Anything? hope everybody will go out and enjoy that and, uh, and share that with your friends. Absolutely. Jamie, it's always a pleasure talking to you. And, again, I always look forward to uh, the Moyer Foundation luncheon. Well, Jamie, thanks a lot for your information, and congratulations on the book. And, again, good luck with the Moyer Foundation. It's a great cause. All right. Thank you, Shannon. Appreciate it. You guys have a great day. If you'd like more information on the Moyer Foundation, go to moyerfoundation.org, IRGPT 